Hello there. How are you today? My name is Joanne Hewins. I have a blog at lovetocreate.typepad.com and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It's been a really long time since I've done a, lot, done a live mm -hmm. and uh, I've missed doing it a lot. Uh, I just decided today to do a little something and I don't know if anyone is actually going to come on and watch or not. There's Tina. Tina, how are you? Um, I have a very simple card that I was going to put on my, uh, hi Beth, that I was going to put on my uh, blog for actually Friday, I guess, but I may just put it on later today. Uh, Beth, it's so good to see you. Um, so anyway, I've got two people. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wanted to show you the front of the catalog. Uh, Tina, I'm sure you have yours by now. Um, uh, it's, I'm very excited about it. I think it's a wonderful catalog. The thing is, uh, I can't open it and show you the inside yet. Uh, but on May, what I think, 3rd, I can, 3rd or 4th, I can show the inside. Uh, but you, it's wonderful. It's got some great, great stuff in there. So this one begins uh, in early May. But we still have this catalog in place. This catalog will be around until the end of June. Now, they will start retiring some of that probably around the beginning of June. But uh, anyway, we still have this one for a while, and it's been a great one, this mini catalog. Lots of good stuff in here. And it's good to see that some of the things that I love so much are going to carry over to our new catalog, too. It's really good. Hi, Ayana. How are you? I uh, wanted to show you, for those of you that are local... I have kind of a beginner class. It's an in-person class. Um, maybe a little bit more than just a beginner class. Uh, but this one is going to be on uh, April 28th. That's a Thursday at 1 o'clock. If you're interested in coming, it's $10 for the four cards. And uh, I'm here to help you through all the steps and help you get through with everything. So that's April 30th, $10. So today, oh, I'm just so excited that somebody is here uh, <laughs> on here to watch me. Today, we're going to make this card. I told you it would be a simple card. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started with it. And I am using the thick, basic white cardstock cut at five and a half by eight and a half. I scored that at four and a fourth. Um, it, this thicker paper just does so much better if you score it first. And then I've really already done the bone folder, but you would do that down the side to give it a good crisp fold. So to do the um, blending on this one, uh, I miss you too, Tina, by the way. I was just thinking about calling you for a lunch date. We're going to have to get together. So I'm going to take um, a ruler, and I'm lining it up on my grid paper. That way I'm sure to get a straight line. And I'm just going to hold my uh, straight edge there. And I'm not left-handed, so that's a little awkward for me, but there you go. And what I did was I went over... Uh, three spaces and uh, that's three-fourths of an inch actually and I'm going to go over six spaces let's see one two three four five six uh, and make another line okay, and I'm trying to make kind of a light line but you're gonna find it's okay it, it doesn't matter so what I wanted to show you, uh, I just recently found this on Amazon. It's removable labeling tape. And so I'm going to use that for the card. We actually made this in the last uh, easy class I did. Uh, and this is wonderful stuff. 
But let me stop for a moment and mention that in our new catalog coming up, this one, they have something in there called uh, uh, masking paper. And this is going to be good, but the masking paper is going to have uses that you can't do with something like this. So I'm very interested in learning uh, more about the masking paper. And I found that in the new catalog. Again, I can't show you the inside, but it's not with adhesives. That's where I thought it would be. It is actually where they have grid paper and the uh, clear blocks and the chamois. It's on that paper. But anyway, we'll go ahead and work with this one. So I'm just going to tear off a strip. And I'm just going to turn that the way I can reach it. I'm going to put that strip just on the outside of the line that I made. And then I'll pull out another strip and use that on the other side. Just on the outside of the line I made. And I'll bring it here and just stick it to the table. And I'm going to be using for this uh, Coastal Cabana, Pear Pizzazz, and Knight of Navy. And I'll be using our blending brushes to do this. Uh, so, I'm going to start down at the bottom with the pear pizzazz. Now, I've got this one labeled Granny for Granny Apple Green, so I'm just going to go on my paper here a little bit and see. I don't think it picked up or kept much of that. Uh, so, I'll open my pear pizzazz, and I'm going to start at the bottom. We'll just... Get that in our color. I'm going to tap out just a little bit of it, and we'll start up here from the bottom. Now, I like to just go in circles and just add a little bit at a time. You can always build up the color if you want. It's kind of hard to take it off. I want it a little bit darker down here at the bottom. And I guess I should tell you that I'm using the Paradise Palms stamp set. And I'm also using the uh, On the Horizon stamp set. These two just go together so well, as does, we have another one that really works well with those, Ocean Front. I'm not using Ocean Front today. Uh, and the On the Horizon is one of those stamp sets that is not going to go into the new catalog. Uh, we'll have it through June, but if it's one that you've been thinking about getting, you might want to go ahead before long and pick up on the horizon. Uh, so let me move these out of the way. And I'm going to leave my green as is. We might need some more in a little bit, we'll see. And then I'm going to open up the Coastal Cabana. Pick up some of our color, tap out a little bit, and I'm just going to come in with the side and add in. Now, I told you that we made these cards at one of my last classes for the sample, and I haven't re-inked my pad, so it could be that using all the ink with the blenders and all of it. It needs a little bit more. I think that's going to be fine. I just love doing stuff like this. It makes me feel like an artist without having to be an artist. And so now I'm going to do the Knight of Navy. That was... I put my strips on here. I put the other ones too, usually just to help us remember what color they're looking at, even though it's in another language. It looks like they've faded a bit. So the Knight of Navy, of course, we want to be, is going to be a little bit darker. And for some reason, my navy tends to kind of blotch up a little bit, even as much as I want to 
keep it. So I might not do it all in circles, we'll see. So that's looking all right. But I want some more down here. Oops. Remember, you can always <laughs> add more, but you can't take off what you get in there. And I'm going to kind of... And what I'm doing is trying to run it down into the other color, just like I did down here. So I'm going to add a little bit of navy down to the end. So I want that darker. Okay. I'm going to come back in, I think, with the Coastal Cabana and just kind of bring some more up here to kind of blend and down here to kind of blend a little bit more. And you'll notice as we were doing all of this, the lines have all but disappeared. So I'm going to pull this off. Now I can use this tape over and over again. So I have class tomorrow. We're going to be doing a different project, but we're going to use this tape. But look what beautiful lines that left for us to have. So the only thing left would be to stamp and the black. So I'm going to be using Memento Black. And for the class, I actually used the Stamparatus. And I used that because they were beginners, uh, some of them. And uh, I wanted them to have a lot of success. Now I'm going to just stamp this on. We'll see how that works. But I have the Stamparatus over here so I can add that in if we need to. Now I got a little bit that bit of that on the block. So I walked away for a second. I'm just gonna wipe that off. And I'm going to put that down near the bottom. I really am going to put it uh so that it came off a little bit, I thought. Not so much, but uh, I think that'll be all right. So there's our, uh, our land, I suppose. And then we're going to put on some of the grass down here. So we'll try that. You can't really see that very much, so I'm going to do it again and make it go up a little bit higher. There. I think that looks better. And then we're going to put in our tree trunk. So I don't know that we really needed, uh, when I did it in class, the Stamparatus. It seems to be fine. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have ink, though, on the sides. Okay, so we'll do our, our tree trunk there. And then I'm using the larger of the, uh, the I don't know, the leaves or the branches of that. So let me get that inked up good. I'm going to check my edges. And this one's a little bit tricky because we want to get that trunk up in this spot right here. So I'm just going to try, try to do that. All right, that works straight down, straight up. And then uh, I'm going to be using some birds, and I forgot to put those on a block. So the birds 
are from this on the horizon. So let me just add that down. And we'll all right. We'll add those over here. Okay, and that leaves just the saying. So the saying that I'm using is also from the On the Horizon stamp set. Now I did not really check to see how straight that was on there. I'm just going to stamp it. I'm using my grid lines. Not quite so strong, uh, so even. I'm going to try to pull up just a little on this side and hopefully that will get it on there somewhat straight and I didn't check my lines on that one so I hope it's okay well crap it's crooked <laughs> but it's okay now uh, for the for the little spots that we have on there yeah. I might have forgotten that we I used the black uh, okay, I've got it right here. I used the black marker, just the Stampin' Right marker, not the blends, but the marker. And what I did was I used the fat end, and I just put this right in this whale right here and pulled down. And let me get that out of the way. You can see that gives you your little dots on there. So that's that does that. So there's one other thing that we are going to add to this. And that is some of the opal rounds. So let me pull these out. And I can't remember where I saw this online. It's not original with me by any any uh, meaning. Uh, but someone used the opal rounds for the coconuts. And I just thought that was so cute. So I copied them. That one's too big. Let me get a smaller one. So anyway, there's our little coconuts on there. So you can see that's just a very, very easy and simple card to do. Mm -hmm. Now on the inside, I had uh, some of the grasses from here. Uh, and then the saying, thinking of you. So I'm going to do uh, the grasses, but I think I'm not going to do the saying. I think I'm going to maybe put a birthday in there a little bit later. And there's the grasses. We'll do a little bit more of the dots on there. There we go. And then I will add, I think, happy birthday later. So it would be wishing you so much happiness and then a happy birthday on there. While we're doing a little bit of blending, and I don't think I took but about 18 minutes to make that card, um, I thought about showing you something about how you would put that on the Stamparatus, but... Uh, it stamps so well, I don't think we, we need that little lesson. So I'm going to pull out a card that we're actually going to make in my classes, my class tomorrow and talk about that for a little bit because it also uses the blending brushes. So let me pull those out of the way. And we're going to start on this one. Now, this one, hold on a minute. I knew I put a kit out. There it is. Uh, this uses the 
butterflies and flowers layering decorative mask. Now that is available, I believe, here in the mini catalog. I'm not exactly sure what page that would be. Um, somewhere it should have the extras. Ah, oh, here it is, uh, on page 65. So these will be around for a little bit longer, but they will be going away at six different pieces, and we aren't going. We're going to use three of those pieces on that. Okay. So let me get that out of the way, and I'm not sure that I'll do the, all of this card, but we'll get started. And one of the pieces. Uh, is going to use this frame right here. So I'm going to lay my paper down, trying to lay it down straight, and then I'm going to put this over the top of it. And I'm kind of looking to see if I have the same amount sticking on this side over as this. And what I'm going to do is just bring back in this tape. And I'm going to put, take the, the uh, mask down. But I'm taping it on the other side of the paper. The paper's white. You probably can't see uh, but it won't matter if I go over the edges. So I've got uh, gray granite for this. And this is just a blend with grays. And I'm just going to Just blend like we did with the blending brushes before. I'm just going to go over this paper. And you may not, oops, you may not feel like you're getting a, not, a lot on there, but you'll be able to see a difference when we take that off. And it's not really so important that you have that super even. There can be lighter and darker places on there. There can be a little bit of a deviation. It's okay. I just think I need to get it a little bit darker. Okay. I can see that my my mask has moved just a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and stop I'm just going to stick these to the side and we'll pull that off and yeah it moved just a little bit down there but some of this is going to be covered that almost hurts my eyes just a tad but uh, it will be fine and then I'm going to pull in a smaller white. So this one is going to go in there. So that covers up some of that eye, <laughs> eye hurting part. Uh, and then we have a piece here. This has been cut out uh, with the uh, rectangle, stitched rectangles. So I'm going to pull in the butterfly. And let me pull this out of the way. I'm going to, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to put this here. I just want the outline of the butterfly. 
And I can see that on this card, it's not going to matter. But I don't want to get anything in this part right here. So I have some little pieces that I have uh, torn off. And I'm going to mask that, that area so that we can't get cover color there. And then we also don't want to have cover color there or there. So I'm just going to put my masking uh, all over that. And we're going to mask with a lighter color. And this is Fresh Freesia. And I think that I picked up the Razzleberry. But I think we'll just clean that out just a little bit and the Freesia will be fine there. And we're just going to color right where that butterfly is. Okay, and again, it's not going to matter a whole lot if uh, it's not real even because we're going to have this other cover color over it. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a different mask and I'm going to lay it over, uh, over right over this butterfly one. Okay, so I want it to stay still, so I'm just going to bring in these long pieces. They certainly wouldn't have to be that long. And uh, try to hold this mask still. And this time I'm going to pull in the blackberry. Berry is a, a much heavier color. And it really won't take much to cover that up well. Okay, I think that's that'll do it on that one. So I'm going to pull this to the side. And I'll just pull away some of my masking tape all my little pieces here I'm gonna just stick here and there okay thick thick fingernails make it hard to handle lifting things sometimes so there is that butterfly isn't that cute and it's really just part of the butterfly. So I'm going to try to make some on the upper part here. So I'm going to do, do that again. And we just don't want to get anything up in there on that. So I'm going to bring in the Fresh Freesia again. Okay, then we'll bring in this piece that we did before. And we'll just leave the butterfly where it is. And we'll tape this piece down. To keep 
keep all of that in one place. Use a blackberry. And all of that back there is colored up with tape, so we're okay. Alright, and there are two pieces. Uh, now let me tell you that this ink does get on the mask, so you're going to have to clean it uh, in between uses. If I started to do another card, I would clean this uh, because some of this darker has gotten around the outside of that a butterfly and I wouldn't want to mix all those colors so these do need to be clean you can just uh, use your chamois to wipe it off or just go stick it under the sink and let it dry is, is probably the easiest thing that you can do uh, to clean those off okay so let me bring in my card parts again and this piece We'll go on here. Now I'm not sure if my glue will work. I've kind of gotten some glues that are near near being done. So uh, this will be on my blog one day next week, and uh, I'll have all the measurements on there. And then you can decide, do you want it to be this way or this way? I think I want it that way. So this will go in the middle. Of that. Now, if you decided you couldn't live with that one because it did move a tad, uh, you could turn it over on the back and do it again, but I'm not going to do that. So I want this in the middle. And then this will go on this label, or this layer. And then our base, now this was the gray granite, and our base is the Blackberry Bliss. I've got that uh, scored. And then this goes here. I actually still can decide if I want uh, which one I want at the top. I want that one at the top. So It helps me to hold at opposite corners. But I just moved it. That's why I like to use glue. It's, it gives you a little bit of moment to pick up and slide over again if you need it. Okay, so for the label, I guess we'll just go ahead and finish this one. I am using a uh, saying, this is from, I don't have it in here with me, friends are better than seashells, it's one of the ocean ones. And I'm going to stamp that on a piece of gray granite.
and then we're going to cut that out uh, with a piece from, I'm going to bring in my little mini uh, cut and emboss. Um, we're going to cut that out from a piece from the, uh, I don't have that in here right now. It's the Tasteful Labels dies. And the Tasteful Labels dies are retiring. I don't know if they are still available. My guess is no, because they're really neat. Uh, but you can check on my online store if you're thinking that you might want to have those. Okay. And I'm just going to back it up because I don't want to put a crease in my paper right here. All right, so there's our label. See the pretty little edges on that? It's a great die set. All right, let me get this out of the way. And I have a piece of the gray granite uh, ribbon. It's a satin-like ribbon. And I am just going to, looking to see if I had um, my seal in here, and I don't. Uh, hold on just a moment. Why I like doing these videos in here where I have my classes because that way I've got most most of the time I've got something and I'm just going to take some glue dots and add that there and I'm going to take glue and glue on the label up this way. Okay, you take some snips and just trim off, oops, trim the edges of my ribbon. There we go. And I used uh, on this the uh, classic matte dots. And I'm a little bit afraid that I may not have enough of the gray granite for my classes. So I'm going to just add the white on this one to get my... Take your pick tool, and we're just going to do, I think that'll look fine. It might even brighten it up just a tad. Uh, yeah, I like that. And I, I've had some up here on that one, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. So for the inside of that card, and I'm not going to do that for you right now, but for the inside, I did another one of the butterflies, and this saying is from the same stamp set as those seashell. Uh, I know uh, friends are like seashells and that kind of thing in there, so that was what the inside will look like. Okay. So today we did two cards. We did this one and this one. And both of those talked a little bit about using our blending brushes. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Tina and Beth and Iona. Uh, I appreciate seeing your names and knowing that you were here. Thanks so much. I uh, don't know if I'll be back next week, but we'll see. Uh, again, uh, love to create .typepad com is where you can find my online store. Bye bye.